In this video, I am going to demonstrate few of the key differences between a virtual machine and a container. So I'm going to begin first by showing you how long it takes to launch a virtual machine versus a container. And here I'm launching a VM on cloud. A cloud server is nothing but a VM in a managed environment anyways. And on the right hand side, if you look at the terminal, I'm using a tool a script, uh, you know, an automation tool called as Ansible to launch a VM. So when I run this script on the left hand side, you should see a VM being created. And this is the real power of DevOps. You can automate almost everything. And uh, in this case, this Ansible script talks to my cloud platform on the left hand side, that is a digital ocean, and it is gonna start launching however many VMs that I ask it to start. Here, I'm just asking it to create one VM. And as you see on the left hand side, the VM is being launched. Now, what I want you to observe is how long it takes for this VM to boot. This particular platform that is DigitalOcean is still fast. So you should see the VM booting really fast and coming up within, you know, a couple of minutes, uh, even less than that, you know, in such certain cases. So let's wait and find out how long it takes. And then we would compare it with the boot time or the launch time of a container. In case of DigitalOcean, the server is called as a droplet. It's a droplet in the ocean. That's why you see on the right hand side, the Ansible output, which says creating or launching one droplets. All right, so it's almost ready. I see the server being created on the DigitalOcean platform. That's my VM actually launched in a managed environment. And I should be able to get the launch time based on how long the script run. So that's approximate launch time of the VM. And I, as you see there at the very bottom of that screen on the right, you see the launch time because I had timed the script run and that is one minute and 35 seconds. Uh, that's still fast if you compare it with a lot of virtual machine boot times. And now it's time to launch a container and compare it with the VM's boot time here. So I'm connected to a server where I have installed Docker already. And what I'm going to do here is just launch one container. This is just for demonstration purpose and uh, I'm not teaching you how to use Docker here. I'm just demonstrating the power of Docker rather. So here I'm launching a container with Redis as an image of the application. As you notice, it took about seven seconds. And that time actually includes the time it required to pull an image, an entire container image. Now, if I don't have an image to pull, it would take even shorter than that. So this is pretty quick. So it is less than a second and it consistently, I'm launching few more container with the same image. And as you notice, it takes less than a second each of that consequent times. And I have about four containers running with the same image now. And this is fast. So the containers, if you compare the launch time, they're definitely much faster than the VM. All right, let's do another test here. And what I'm gonna show you here is contain how light the containers are. On the left-hand side, I'm going to connect to one of the containers that I have launched earlier. And I'm inside that container. On the right-hand side, I'm on a VM, a cloud server, which is nothing but a VM. And here I'm just comparing, I'm showing you what are the processes running on that VM on the right-hand side. And as, as you notice here, there are a bunch of processes running. My applications are running at the very bottom somewhere, but there are probably 50, 60 other process running that I don't even know about or care about. And that's the overhead that you have when you run a VM because it is necessary for all these housekeeping and system process to be run before you actually launch your applications. 
Whereas on the left hand side, if you look at the container, if I run the same command, I only see the application and probably just shell running inside that. Again, that emphasizes how lightweight this container is. And it still gives you a sort of a virtual environment, just like a VM, which has this network interfaces. You can see that container running its own, uh, you know, in processes with its own PIDs, with its own network interfaces. So containers give you a virtual environment somewhat similar to the VMs. And that's the reason we are comparing the containers with the VMs here. So the point I want to emphasize here is containers are not only fast, but also lightweight and they have the minimalist overhead when they run. All right, let's do one more comparison between the images because containers need images too. VMs need images as well, obviously. And if you look at these images, these are the VM images or my cloud server images. And if you notice, they are in GBs. Whereas if I list the Im images that I have on my system for the containers, they are in just MBs. Some of those are as small as, you know, 1.78, you know, or 1.84 KB. That's really tiny. And I'm pulling a new image with a full-fledged operating system like CentOS. And even if you look at an image like CentOS or even Ubuntu that I already have on my system, you would notice that the container images are optimized and lightweight. So I'm pulling two images, one for CentOS, one for Ubuntu. And then I'm gonna show you uh, by listing those again to demonstrate how lightweight or small these images are. The one with Ubuntu is just 64 MBs and the one with CentOS is, you know, it's about 202 MBs. That's definitely smaller than a VM's image. And that was our comparison between the VMs and containers.